Hello, and today we'll be looking at the AR Studio created by Facebook, and we'll be looking into how to create a face mask effect. It's important to note that the AR Studio is only available currently for Mac OS. And first thing we need to do is create a new project. This will create us a default template uh, layout. So I'm just going to very quickly and briefly go over the interface for you. So here we see our focal distance, our directional lights, which are included in our scene, where we can adjust all our properties over to the right. So I can adjust the intensity of my lights on my objects that I'll put into my scene. And then up here we have our manipulation tools where we can move any asset in our scene. And if we click the video button, we can change our default video template. And even if we wanted to use our inbuilt camera, which is what we'll use later on. Next up is our aspect ratio change where we can change our preview size. So this includes some default sizes for iOS and Samsung devices, but you can also use a resizable window. And this is our little preview panel down here where we can simulate touch and the screen's rotation and which cameras use, whether it's front or back. So as you see, I can orbit my camera around like so. Next up, we have our viewport where we can change our layout of our interface. So we can have side by side or multiple views if you want to, but I'm just going to keep it to a single view for today. And we also have our camera change perspective where if we right click, we can change which perspective we have our camera at. Again, I'm going to keep this at bird's eye, but you may want to adjust that depending on what content you're aiming to create. So the first thing we need to do is we need to insert a face tracker object. So we simply right click and click insert face tracker. So as you can see, we've got very options down here. But first thing we need to do is put a face tracker into our scene like so. I'm just going to drag this into our focal distance area. And as you see, you can see now when the woman is moving her head that this focal face tracker is rotating and moving with it. Then what with the face tracker selected, we need to right click again and insert a face mesh. What this will give us is a untextured facial mesh uh, model which will again, as you see, rotate and manipulate with the scene. And again, we can go over to properties and we can toggle it on or off. We can have it so the eyes are visible or invisible, whether it has holes for mouth or nose, base, uh, mouth or eyes, basically. And then if we click on the material options, within the properties of the face mesh, we can add a material to our mesh, which is what we're going to do today. And we're just going to use the default material one, uh, default zero, material zero, sorry. If we go over to our layers seen here and click on our materials and then select our default material zero, you'll notice our property channel changes again. So we can change what shader type it's using by default. So whether we go for a physically based um, shader or a face paint, which is what we actually will be using for this workshop demo. So go back to face paint. And what I want to do is I want to be adding a custom texture. So I'm just going to import this image here as a texture and just click open. And as you see, by default, put that texture onto our material. However, you'll notice that because I haven't scaled the image correctly before bringing it into the application, I'm going to have to do some adjustments to the tiling and offset values. Again, you'd want to make sure that you get this correct first in Photoshop before bringing it in. But there is a minor way you can adjust it, although it won't be giving us perfect results. I go back onto my face mesh and just turn on my eyes and mouth again. So. I can see my real eyes and mouth underneath the face paint mesh. And you can see I can adjust the opacity of it or the influence and the brightness, etc. So again, play about with these values until you get the kind of effect you're desiring. As you see, it can kind of cut out the hair if the hair is solid enough to 
allow the mesh to be deformed in such a way. So I'm just going to turn on the inbuilt face camera. As you'll notice, this video is pre-recorded. So I'm just recording the audio at the top, but you can see here we go. I'm moving my mouth around, just ch checking it's tracking my face okay, which it seems to be. And again, as with any project or anything you develop, it's always important to test as you go along and refine as needed. So if I go back onto my face mesh here, sorry, my face tracker here, and right click and click insert plane. Could insert 3D object, but I've got no 3D objects on my machine, so I'm just going to go for the plane option for now. This brings in a checkerboard plane shape, which is just a flat panel basically, that's only uh, viewable on the one perspective. And then with the plane selected, I can then add a, I'm going to basically create a new material. So if I click this drop down here and click create new material, it creates a new material over in our assets panel over here. And I'm just going to give this a color. I could import my own image and it would keep transparency if that image was, for example, a .png. So what I want to do is I want this plane to only be visible when I perform a certain action. So if I right click on the face tracker and create a patch, I can now basically start adding some simple interactions to my mesh. So if I click and drag off the face uh, icon down here, it's bring up a search box where it gives me a variety of options. I want it to basically use the mouth open. So when my mouth mesh is opened, I wanted to perform an action, so I'm just going to insert this like so. And what I want to do is I want this plane to be only visible when the mouth is open. So I simply go back onto my plane object and next to this visible icon is a little dot. If I click on that once, it will add that uh, control option into my patch editor. And I can just simply now link up the visible to the mouth open. Therefore means when the mouth is open, the object is visible, but when the mouth is closed, it should not be. So if I go and turn on my camera again, you'll notice that nothing's happening at the moment, but if I go up here and click the run button, and if I start to move ahead and open my mouth, you'll notice that it opens and closes. So it becomes visible and invisible, depending on whether my mouth state is open or closed. This allows, obviously, for more interactions. You could have it so when you raise your eyebrows, a certain animation plays, or your mesh changes, etc. But um, for now, I'm just trying to get across the simple basics. So I can also insert a hand tracker. So if I right click and insert a hand tracker back into my scene, like so. I don't want my hand tracker to be a child of the face of, uh, face tracker, so I'm just going to drag it above so it becomes its own uh, parent, essentially. And then I'm going to insert, and I'm going to insert a particle system. But again, we could insert a three D object or plane or any other object that we could ha uh, think of. But again, my machine currently does not have any three D assets on. So if you look over at the options, we can change the particle system effects. So we can adjust whether it uh, generates locally or in the world space itself. And to previous, I'm gonna to have to turn on my webcam. So as I move my hand around, you can see these little like squares, which are the particle emissions. So I can adjust its birth rate, its spray, its speed, its material, or properties, etc. And again, this can take a bit of time to refine. So I'm just gonna speed it up a bit. It's important to know you can only track one hand, so you can't do anything involving two hands, but you get the basic idea across. So that's how you create a basic facial mesh in the AR Studio for Mac OS, and it is now ready to export if you really wanted to do so. Thank you for watching.